Hey Max, what's going on, man? Well, not too much. Just uh, got done watching Face Off. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of opinions on it. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's an insane movie, man. I tell you what. You know what though? I'm in a good mood today. You know why I'm in a good uh, mood? Uh you got laid? Uh no. But uh, we're coming up on one of my favorite times of the summer. That's not movie related. Suns out, guns out. Uh, no, not quite. I don't have the guns to do suns out, guns out. That's yeah, that's true. Uh, but it was a good day, and I I read a lot of news on something that's coming up, Max, that I'm a big fan of. I don't know if you feel the same way, but we're both baseball fans. Uh, I think the non waiver trade deadline for Major League Baseball is the greatest trade deadline in all of sports. I am just super hyped up. I watched like two hours of stuff today on like YouTube and MLB Network. I was just going in on all of it. Uh, I'm super hyped up about it. Are you, are you a trade deadline guy? Do you do you get into the, the trades and all that kind of stuff or just like what's involved with the Twins? Uh, yeah, I get involved in a little bit. I just love how Maurer has been placed on waivers every year and people right. don't understand how they work. So they think the Twins are <laughs> like they put them on every year, you dumb shit. We're we're big twins fans for for the listeners out there that are. Uh, unfortunately, I think we got our last video got ten views. So I mean, ten people. <laughs> yeah, that's better than zero. It is better than zero, not but, by much. But people but, are starting uh, to listen. Oh, I think yeah. that, I think they just like our traction. personalities. Yeah, that, that's what I've gathered. I think we could just talk shit about each other for the whole time, and that'd be the show. <laughs> Probably. Uh, well, welcome back to Real Takes, everybody. Um, my name is Riley. Fascinating. You want oh. to tell me what your name is, or are you? Uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a weird time out there. We're off to it's a good weird, start weird, here weird, on Real Takes. Some weird people out there. My name is Max. <laughs> uh, and if you uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the show, um, first of all, welcome. Uh, and we're this is kind of Real Takes uh, version like 1.5 because we're doing something a little different today than we did the first we two realized, times through. We realized two hours is way too fucking long. Yeah. People don't want to listen to that long. Uh, we did just recently put up a, uh, a two-hour show, though. Um, Max and I talked a little bit about our top five favorites in four different genres. So if you guys want to go check that out, please feel free to do so. We're going to try to do that, I think, on a monthly basis. And... Uh, do the top five things. I want to do like direct. I don't want to limit it to just genres too. Like we should do like actors, directors, different, different things. Make top five lists of literally anything. That's right. Um, so that's a, that's something to look out for. Um, I think we'll have some kind of news coming up soon, uh, regarding getting into things like Apple podcasts. Uh, Max, and I need to have a, a discussion about that, but we're both very busy. Um, and you know, stuff costs money. So that's a, that's a factor. Yeah, I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I'm really uh, hyped to talk about this movie. Um, I am I too. Stop, I can't stop thinking about it. So before we get into that, though, I want to talk a little bit about something else. Uh, we need to talk a little bit about like drive-through etiquette. Is it is it a problem out there in Montana? Do you see a bunch of assholes in the in the drive-through out there? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you do. They got a lot of the double the double lane <laughs> one. It's like, fuck you, dude. I'm they going to zip them my car is in the lane. <laughs> like, my truck is bigger than yours. I'm going. Well, let me, let me tell you a story about what happened today. So I get off work. It's a beautiful day. I'm in a great mood. Uh, you know, I'm coming home. I'm excited Birds to record are this. Singing, the sun is <laughs> shining. <laughs> right. um, so I, I go through the, the Jimmy John's drive through today. Uh, and hot, here's a tip for you people. A pro tip uh, for drive through etiquette. Turn your fucking radio down. And don't – I've never worked in a drive-thru, but I can't imagine that's fun to listen to where you have some asshole just shouting. This guy is so – Max, I'm behind this guy, and he's blaring just this awful music. I don't even know what it is. Uh, Florida, Georgia line. I, it wasn't country. I don't know what the hell it was, but it wasn't good. It was a very whiny sounding – like I don't know if it was like alternative or something. Anyway, that's not the point. Play, the okay. point is, is this guy rolls up to the drive-thru. I have my windows down. I can hear everything he's listening to and saying. He's got two people in the car with him. 
and he starts fucking shouting. He's like, yeah, I'll have a number four. And it's like, Give me that dude, fucking big chicken. Dude, they can hear you. Like, I'm pretty sure they can hear you. Uh, in fact... People don't, rea- people don't realize how sensitive those microphones are. <laughs> they can literally hear you talking at, like, room volume in the car. They can hear you talking shit about him because he doesn't know the fucking guy flips burgers for a living. Well, fucking John doesn't know how to take my order. What a stupid fuck. Well, guess what? He just spat in your burger. That's you right. Shit. That's how you get shit. But come on. Like, don't yell. Don't play loud music. That shit irritates me so much. I hate when people play loud music just, like, in public. Like, yeah. Like, I, I'll bump my stuff like anybody else. But, like, at a stoplight, it's got to be volume 100. Right. Like, who no. are you trying to impress? There. So, I, I turn my shit off when I go through a drive through I don't... Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't even have anything on. Um... Like if I'm if I'm listening to like a podcast or something that other people don't want to listen to, I'm turning my shit off because I'm polite and they don't need to hear what I'm listening to, and I don't want them to hear what I'm listening to a lot of times because maybe sometimes I I, uh, I I listen to some guilty pleasure music while I'm jamming out in the car. So yeah, man. Well, I just yeah, I just I, even, I, t- I turn my volume down on the stoplight, like. <laughs> just uncomfortable everyone's looking like who's a dickhead listening to you know bet midler at one o'clock <laughs> on a tuesday honestly too like i i don't even drive most of the time i don't even drive with the windows down i'm an ac guy because i'll, I'll drive and it's super hot and i don't want that that fucking sun coming through it's so damn hot it's been super hot here in duluth lately i don't know what's going on it was like yeah 85 today but humidity was like out, out of this world it was ridiculous yeah, two things. A, uh, it was 101 here yesterday. Okay. Uh, second of all, I don't, your logic doesn't jive up there. The sun comes through the window. Well, the, the window's not like a. I'm talking about the heat. Locker. I'll take the AC over the the wind blowing. It's too loud. The wind's too loud. I drive fast. How old are you? Uh, the wind is loud. The sun's <laughs> on my elbow. Turn that music down, young man. <laughs> Playing that rock and roll. Uh, yeah, the rock and roll. The, remember we had a teacher in, uh, or did you have you had a teacher in the uh, math teacher, um, whose name we'll omit yeah, I had here. A, I, had a, I had a math teacher where he was he was uh, he always said the line about how we could re- memorize the lyrics to the kaboom kaboom music, but we couldn't couldn't remember like math formulas. <laughs> Holy shit, the kaboom yeah, yeah. kaboom music. I feel like I'm, that's what I'm going to be calling it here pretty soon because people listen yeah. to it so fucking loud. He had some demons. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just comes down to not being a dickhead. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna play my music loud, but like in public, I'm not because I'm not a dick. Yeah. You know. Moral. Here, here's your real takes podcast. Moral of the story today: Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick in the drive-through. Don't be, just in general. Don't be a dick. Fast food pranks are not funny. Like they were funny when our generation first started doing them in like 2005, when YouTube was invented. <laughs> Hey, oh my god, someone took your order. Oh, you had a Sprite, you threw it back on the person? Guess what? That person probably pays $1,300 to live in a one-bedroom apartment on the south side of whatever godforsaken city they live in. And they just needed a little happiness to get through their day, but no, some jerk-off 13-year-old in his daddy's Escalade had to throw a fucking Powerade back in their face. And guess what? They gotta keep working. They can't They can't go wash that shit off. So now they're going the whole day full of Powerade. They go home, they're sticky. They're gonna have ants. They live in a shitty part of town. They're going to have ants. You know, just, just be a nice person. Shit. Yeah. Although, who's doing that, though? I don't... <laughs> why are you throwing a full a full soda that you just... Like, why is that funny? Like, I don't, even when I was, like, immature and younger, like, that's that shit still isn't funny. Dude, if somebody rolled through the drive-thru, like, naked or whatever, I'd be like, oh, here's a hot coffee. Whoops, didn't put the lid on. I'll say, sorry. Uh, um, something tells me you wouldn't have... Pecker back. Something tells me you wouldn't have the job very long. Oh. Fun gluing your pecker back on, <laughs> Tony. Uh, okay, yeah. We got we got way sidetracked there just because I wanted to I wanted to talk about that. But um, people are assholes. That's they the are fun Pe- of lesson here. People are people assholes. Are. No more are people assholes, Max. Than one of the characters in this movie that we're going to talk about today. Did you like that segue? That was a great segue. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, the segue was probably better than the whole movie. All right, uh, so what we're going to do here on Real Takes is Max and I last week decided, and I don't know how Max is. I actually haven't talked to Max about this, uh, but we'll get there in a second. 
uh, we both decided that we were going to watch a film and we're going to start watching films that we neither of us have seen. Uh, that way we give you guys kind of a real take, uh, pun intended, I guess. Um, we'll give you a little bit of a, a, a more genuine take on a movie other than just like picking stuff that we love. Um, we, the first two podcasts, uh, we picked uh, a couple, a bunch, four movies that we both, I think, really enjoy. Um, yeah, we let Riley pick this one. And... <laughs> so, awesome. but the but the idea here, Max, is that we're trying to not just you know, for lack of a better term, suck a movie's dick for half hour. We want people to kind of give you know we want we want to kind of give an example uh, of our taste. Uh, and so this week, and we're, it's always going to be on a streaming site, and I really would like to experiment this next week with a poll uh, for even if it only garners like 11 votes, um, you know, put a poll up on Facebook, put a poll up on Twitter. Um, we want, I, I kind of want listeners to pick what we listen to. So we'll give you the options. Max and I will sit down we'll, and we'll pick two or three movies. Um, Born doesn't count. Born does not count. This is not a porn podcast. Max can do that on his on his own time. He's got the microphone. He's got the the tools. It's called a uh, skin tastic. Uh, <laughs> we record at eleven p.m. on Friday. <laughs> so, Max, what, uh, what what are your thoughts on, on putting up a poll for the the ten listeners? Oh, I thought you were gonna ask me what my thoughts are on this movie. Uh, you know, I think that'd be. Are you drinking a surge? No, I'm drinking a uh, a Mountain Dew Kickstart. Oh Jesus! It's uh, late. No, I think I think it'd be good. I'd like to know um all, all ten people what they think. Yeah. You know, and I guess we'll be the guinea pigs for people that don't want to see these movies. Yeah, and, I mean, we'll we'll throw some good ones in there too, you know, for sure. But no, I think it'll be fun. Yeah, and I and I think you know, good. I guess is is, is a relative term because um, you know we want to give genuine takes and like if you know, I, I think it's more authentic if if it like for example, I li- I don't like something and you like it or vice versa or you know, I'm I'm sure sometimes we'll end up agreeing. And maybe tearing something apart or really liking something, but uh, the idea is that we're gonna pick some movies on on streaming sites. That way, you guys can can watch them with us, and um, you know, because we're gonna go deep into spoilers uh, on this show, uh, not hold anything back. Uh, so if you have not seen the movies that we're talking about, don't listen, and don't yell at us about spoiling movies, especially spoiling a, a twenty year old movie. You don't need to watch this. We'll we'll talk about it enough. So this week, uh, we chose, uh, I suggested, you did not come up with any other suggestions, so that's why we, we went with this one. We chose the 1997 film uh, Face Off, and before we get into our takes on this movie, uh, we'll give you guys a little bit of background on this. So this movie was, came out on June 27th, 1997. It is directed by John Woo, uh, who went on, this was really his first foray into uh, financial, somewhat relatively financial, successful. Well, this, it, it was the first Hollywood film in which he was given uh, like creative control. Correct. So he, I mean, he direct, you know, he controlled everything on the film. Yep. Portion. He he had previously done uh, the movie Broken Arrow, which coincidentally also stars John Travolta, who is in this film. Uh, and the movie is also written by um, Mike Werb and Michael McCallery is the name. Um, and these two guys are also not super famous. I think the only feature film credit that I saw that they had, other than they wrote the Laura, the Laura Croft original Tomb Raider film. Um, and then they also wrote, Max, this is a fun little fact. If you haven't seen the movie Dark Man with Liam Neeson, uh, I think it's with Liam Neeson. Let me double check that really quick. But if you have not seen the movie Dark Man, um, Check out that movie because they wrote it is a Liam Neeson movie. Uh, it's a bonkers Liam Neeson movie too. He's like a uh, like a scientist, and then he gets like in an accident. Um, but anyway, they wrote a sequel to that family, movie, uh, which I believe was titled like Dark Man Three Die Dark Man Die, which is just that's just fantastic. I love. Yeah, that. I think I think you hit the nail on the head when you said they're not really well known. <laughs> um, Probably. Anyway, uh, so yeah, John Woo, 1997, June 27th. It came out around the same time as like Hercules and things like that. Um, and uh, I'll get us started here, Max, uh, in talking about this movie. So I, I had heard about this film. I had seen various things. And I, I knew what it was about going into it. 
Uh, did you were you aware of of kind of what it was going in? Had you heard of the movie at all? Well, when you said it, I looked it up on Flickster. And yeah. Rotten Tomato. So I mean, I had like an idea they had something to do with their faces and yeah. like coming off. Probably. <laughs> yes. Um. So Max, I'm gonna be honest with you. This movie, I, I was kind of sitting back and I started watching it, and I thought, okay, it's it's got kind of a very '90s vibe to it. I wasn't really on board uh, in the beginning of this film. And John Travolta is uh, kind of he's on the carousel or whatever, and it's in like slow motion, and it's playing like this like what this sort of like dreamy music, and then his kid fucking dies, and then it flashes forward to like six years later. But what really really drew me into this movie, Max, and I have a feeling just kind of based on your general attitude this evening that you're not going to feel the same way. Uh, I was hooked for two reasons. Number one. Uh, <laughs> Nicolas Cage going nuts in a minister outfit, and then he gropes a choir girl, okay? And then, like, no less than two minutes later, he gets out of the car, and his coat is blowing in the wind in slow-mo, all while the fucking credits are still rolling. Max, I loved this movie. Yeah, uh... I would agree that the uh, the scene, the opening scene with uh, Nicolas Cage was was pretty awesome. Um, to me, I'll just kind of hit on a couple of things that would go in detail here. The music fucking sucked. <laughs> like there'd be like like a like a like a really important tear jerking scene. Like, like it, it, the the music didn't match like <laughs> any any of the movie at all. Oh. And honestly, Travolta was terrible what his acting was what? awful no dude he's so fucking good in this movie this is what my i appreciate son, my son died <laughs> okay here's why don't you look at me when we make love here's here's what i will say what? i will agree with you that before he becomes nicholas cage in this movie it's questionable he's mailing it in at that but, point but when he becomes nicholas cage it is on fucking point. This guy literally embodies Nicolas Cage. And that's what I, I find I say, so yeah. fascinating about this movie is they play each other so well. So when the, when the, when the, when the, the face swap happens, Travolta just kills it. And it really, it's really kind of, uh, you know, the first 20 minutes or so are kind of like set up, set up, set up, um, kind of establishing where these characters are. Obviously, John Travolta is still reeling. Um, from the death of his son, which we should mention that Nicolas Cage's character, whose name I love, by the way, it's it's a oh, name that, that sounds like it... <laughs> that bugged the shit out of me the way they said it. Castor Troy. It, that's his name. It wasn't like, oh, this is Castor Troy. Castor Troy. It's Castor Troy. <laughs> it's like one it's word. Troy. They say it. Is it, like, oh, is it a competition so you can say it the fast? Say it the fastest or what? Castor Troy. Castor Troy. Like, um, yeah. Oh. It's it's so great, and I, and his fucking brother's name is Pollux, which is even it's even better. Um, but I just I just love the we'll we'll kind of get into detail kind of as we go through the film. But like like let's go back to the beginning a little bit of this movie because right after this slow mo thing happens, it's very much. And I believe I read a little bit of trivia today that that John Woo drew inspiration for that scene from Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, this is not Lawrence of Arabia, but I just love it. Is so nineties for Nicolas Cage to get out of this car. Well, there's like a squealing guitar, like <laughs> like so, and his coat is just flapping in the wind. And then of course he just like holds his arms out, right? And the two guys take his fucking coat off. They inexplicably give him like a fucking bin that has chiclets in it and like all this other random shit. Oh. They've got like such like weird like weird dialogue like they're on the plane and like he's like hitting on the stewardess he's like do you want to suck <laughs> my tongue and we're like what the fuck That's what I, I That's just I, I love just how quirky this movie is but I do agree with you that the acting is not good until you get to that scene the face swapping scene because um, everything up until that like I mentioned is set up set up we get it John Travolta is is kind of a hard ass FBI agent. Uh, and he's obsessed with catching this, um, this, uh, Troy. this Castor Troy, Troy play, of course, played by Nicolas Cage. John Travolta plays Sean Archer, is his character's name. Uh, we should also mention a little bit about this cast. Uh, Joan Allen plays his wife, the great Joan Allen. 
Um, Gina Gershon plays like Nicolas Cage's character's girlfriend. Uh, that woman, that woman. I hope she didn't pay for those lips. <laughs> That was a bad Botox job. Um, and, and kind of the last thing, I'll, I'll talk about some of the supporting cast. Um, because a lot of the supporting cast in this movie, Max, is not memorable at all. I don't give a shit about his relationship. And the one thing that does bug me about this movie, before I get into all that, actually, is... So, we see this opening scene where, for no re- for seemingly no reason, uh, it, it, was he trying to shoot John Travolta and missed... Or was he just like trying to kill this kid like randomly? Like that's oh, never explained. It, he, yes, it is. He literally says, "I was trying to shoot you." Oh, okay. At I, the end, yeah. Well, I, well, you watched it like two hours ago. I watched it like a week ago, so um, I mean, I must have missed that part. But it's um, like weird. So like they're on the carousel, and he's got the snipe rifle. And yeah. like, dun, 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 dun. You're like, is this serious? Or but like, I, I guess what I meant, like, like why was he trying to kill him in the first place? Like that's never explained, right? Like they never talk about like. Why this dude hates just because he's an FBI agent? Like, did he? Foil dude, they a jumped a fucking speedboat through a tugboat and landed it in the water. Like, I, yeah, you know, I don't think the storyline is we'll the biggest to, yeah. thing here. Well, we'll get to that scene. Uh, but anyway, just some of the supporting cast that I saw. It's always interesting going back and watching these like '80s and '90s movies and seeing people that are kind of mainstays now in a lot of things. Like John Carroll Lynch uh, plays a prison guard in this movie. Um, Tommy Flanagan. Uh, Thomas Jane is in this movie. Um, he plays one of the prisoners that, that Nick Cage uh, gets involved with. And Matt Ross, if you watch... Uh, CCH Pounder. Yeah, CCH Pounder's in this. Uh, Matt Ross, if you watch okay. Silicon Valley, uh, is in this. Um, yeah, this... <laughs> I don't even know where to begin because... Let's just start, let's just start going through because I, I got a couple of bitches right off the bat here. Okay, so the carousel scene. Okay, sweet. So... So there he's on this plane, you know, he's got his chiclet, sucking tongue or whatever. So this plane... Well, his gold is, guns, by the way. His guns gold are gold. Guns. Those are sweet. <laughs> so he's, you know, all of a sudden the police, Archie gets his hot tip. He's coming to, to chase him. You guys have this jet. These things take like five seconds to take off. Yeah. Okay, they're taxiing down the runway for probably 45 minutes. Okay, they're like shooting out engines and shit. Okay, whatever. So that happens. They fly the plane into the hangar. There's a big battle. Okay. How fucking lazy could they be? You literally watch one of the dudes <laughs> run up with wires attached to him. They shoot him, and you can see him get pulled up in the air by the wires. It's like clear as day. No one yeah. was like, hey, we should uh, CGI those wires off that dude. <laughs> it was just like the laziest editing I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, that that kind of stuff doesn't really, doesn't really bug me i mean because i mean there is Terrible. there is a scene though where i mean he stops the plane because the humvee's driving right at him this guy's not on uh castro troy's payroll he's on he's i would imagine right like i don't think he's i think he's just like a pilot that they he just like, gun to his head he could have taken off and then all of a sudden they're blocking the wings like with the helicopter like yeah well i mean clearly this was a very off, dude. <laughs> clearly this was a very elaborate uh put together sting by the fbi here um Whatever, they got a tip like 20 minutes earlier, he's getting on a plane, all of a sudden they got the whole fucking SWAT team out there? <laughs> on bees? A helicopter? <laughs> um, is this where our tax money's going? Yes. Yeah, that's what the FBI's in. They're just chasing down Nicolas Cage. Yeah, a lot of them died, uh, too. In an airplane. Dude, it's, okay, that, that's the thing I wanted. I really wanted to bring up. I'm glad you brought that up. Every fucking buddy that Castor Troy, basically everybody that Castor Troy comes into contact with in this movie, dies. The they body like, count in this movie all is of the insane. FBI, basically. Oh yeah. yeah, he fucking kills the doctor that uh, that he <laughs> kills everybody that knew. So, he kills all the FBI people. Fucking Archer shoots a few of his own dudes just yeah, to just know. to fucking yeah. He oh, man save character. Um, let let let's, so everything just kind of like you know whatever, and he comes home, and you know every the thing that, and it's interesting about this movie is you know where everything's going. Right? Like, from the very beginning, you know how it's going to end. You know what's going to be involved. So, like, John Travolta comes home, and he's just kind of like, we got him. <laughs> and, like, they celebrate, oh, kind but, but, but of. First of all, though, first of all, though, he comes home. He looks like he just got hit by a car. Yeah. Okay, his shirt's ripped. Pants are ripped. He's got stuff everywhere. He comes home, and his wife's just like, your daughter got into a fight at school today. He's just like, <sighs> His daughter's like, you don't care about me, dad. And his wife's like, I gotta go. And he's like, 
Uh, we fucking got him. Do I, I literally look like I came through a hurricane. She's just like, I gotta go. Yeah. That's like, why... What? That's why by the end of this movie, I don't give a shit about anybody except for Travolta and Cage. Because there's... Oh, the side sure. characters... The side characters in this movie don't matter. No, um, they all. they literally don't. Because they, they... The side characters either end up dead within, like, two minutes of you meeting them. Like, these... this. Like Thomas Jane doesn't Thomas Jane I can't remember if Thomas Jane gets killed in the in the prison or not, uh, but but like these characters that we like were introduced to the Doctor, um, and then like there's no explanation like the, the Doctor just walks in he's like hey I can put your his face on yours and he's just like all right yeah he's like the only <laughs> dude that no... knows how to do it yeah. he's the only dude that knows how to do it then he gets killed and at the end it's like oh yeah some other dude knows how yeah. to do it too. they've got a couple guys that can do it fuck yeah. It's it's insane. And like they're three D printing the one guy like a new ear. Like the guy that got shot. Yeah, what and is this, Westworld? And then I, I just so I guess most of my appreciation for this, it sounds like I'm shitting on this movie. I just love how bananas this movie is. This movie is so insane and the action is so great and the, the one sl- action is not that great. the action is fantastic. It's so stylistically shot. I love the way that John Woo moves the camera. Shot everything it is, that it's, I thought this was a Michael Bay film for a second. I think oh, it is. I, I tipped over this garbage can. <laughs> I, I think there's a little bit more class to the action in this film than, than a Michael Bay movie. It's terrible CGI. There isn't a lot of CGI in this, though. This is a lot, a lot of practical of effects. There's like, a lot of flames towards the end. Yeah, but I mean, and that's that's fine, but like... I think I think the reason I like this, uh, the more I thought about this movie, the more I really enjoyed it, because of of which we'll get to the the face swap after everything after the face swap is great, uh, in a very '90s way, and uh, I just I, I, I we can agree to disagree on this I guess I love the way the action is shot in this movie, um, it's very blockbustery feeling, uh, like I said, John Woo used a lot of practical effects in this movie, um, I like the way he moves the camera. Uh, in certain action scenes, it's not a lot of shaky cam that you see nowadays, um, which can be used uh, effectively. But everything here is just—it's so, uh, in my opinion, it's very—it's very well shot. Uh, it seems really gimmicky to me. Like, like they're just going for dumb action fans. Or like, like the speedboat tips over in the water; it's not going to fucking explode. <laughs> Like that just to me that's just like over the top. It's like, hey, you're fucking stupid. So here's an explosion, you dumbass. Well, like that's very much what I mean. That's very much what '90s blockbuster action was. I mean, I agree, and it sucks. And I and I, I think that's why when we, we talked about speed last week, though. I mean, speed is a lot in the vein of this, right? Like where you have a the basic plot of that movie is you have a bus that can't go under like sixty miles an hour or whatever it is. And if it does, it blows up. So, to me, I love this over-the-top, um, kind of ultra-violent 90s action stuff. Um, it doesn't have to have a, a terrific plot. This is how you do a movie, in my opinion. This is how you do a movie with very little involved in the plot. And it's a unique plot. I, I, I can't think of another... I mean, you have guys that, that steal identities, but have you ever seen a movie where they swap literally faces. swap faces? No, because it's a stupid idea. I love this idea. It, no, it's, so okay, so let's is, talk about a week. Talk about a week script. How the fuck did he get the bomb into that place? Why is he dressed as a preacher? That's the other thing. Like, there's a lot of shit that isn't explained. <laughs> I think this is. I think this is John Woo rescuing a terrible script, and I think it's. I think it's Cage and Travolta acting the shit out of basically each other and pulling it off. Uh, brilliantly so let's 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 get to the point now where so um everything before that happens is basically just set up you get a little bit of a taste of both of the characters you get that nicholas cage is kind of a maniac um he goes to this jail where they wear fucking like magnetic boots and they like well, this is them. after they this is after they swap faces yeah no yeah uh, yeah it is isn't it yeah that's right yeah. sorry um so the doctor comes in inexplicably and just says, I can do this procedure. And John Travolta goes home and he's like, I gotta go away John Travolta goes, hell no. Yeah, it's so cliche, like, in in that sense that, like, you know exactly the conversation he's gonna have with his wife. Where he sits at the edge of the bed, he's very brooding, and he's like, 
I gotta go away again. And she's like, whatever. And like, they just have like this random fight. And then they kind of leave it at that. And then he goes and he has the procedure, right? And then he comes out and he is Nicolas Cage. Um, and there's this really great scene, actually, I thought, where he first sees himself as Nicolas Cage in the mirror and he kind of has a breakdown. Like, I, in that way, it's it's obvious, but it's a very, it's a very good way to even kind of add a little bit of depth to that character, at least to know he's like he literally has become the thing he's hunting um in order to to stop him for good basically but he doesn't stop him for good does he max uh no he does not <clears throat> no he does not um another weird weird part of the movie yeah. there. so let, so if you first of all they've got this guy who's still alive with no security around him at all second of all how much pain do you think you'd be in? No security, up even. Without I would a, how much pain would you be in if you woke up with your fucking face missing? <laughs> he just, like, gets up and, like, slowly rubs his face. It's like, huh, where's my face? Like, what? Yeah. And then he is, and I love that his first thought, right, because he gets up and he just kind of walks around. Number one, his first thought is, I need a cigarette. <laughs> Number two, his second thought is, Get this fucking guy on the phone. We're gonna call him up, and you're gonna put uh, Travolta's face on mine. How and does he kill who that guy? Is he's been in a coma the whole time? How does he? Well, know he sees where it he on the is? newspaper. That's how he finds out who it is. Does he? Yeah, he sees it on a newspaper, I think. And then he calls. Uh, I'm sure his henchmen or whatever, and they bring him there, and then he fucking. It's, it's, yeah, that's such a '90s thing. Oh, I get the lumber. He's got henchmen Yeah, he got his, He's got his fucking posse or whatever. Um. And then, like, from there, and then, so John Travolta goes in with Nicolas Cage's face to the the magnetic boot prison, and he gets what he he wants very quickly. Um, And then, of course, predictably, and this is one of the things that I I love about this movie, is when Cage shows up, by the way, this, all this shit seems like it happens in, like, 24 hours. Like, he gets the procedure done, he's up and walking. He's like very '90s bad guy, like reading Yo, a paper. The, the only thing missing from the scene where they first come face to face with each other after having their faces swapped, the only thing that's missing is like either uh, Travolta chewing on like a toothpick or like eating an apple, <laughs> like just like twirling his mustache. Yeah, he's very in that scene. He's very like. And then I just, I just love this scene. They had this confrontation where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, I killed everybody that knows about this thing, and I have your face. And then, Max, in what I think is the most disturbing part of this movie, he goes to Travolta's house, as obviously as Travolta, but as Caster Troy, and he has this super creepy moment with Travolta's daughter. She's just yeah. sitting in the thing. He's, like, staring at her, and then he has, like, this weird conversation where he, like, gets a cigarette, and he's like, I won't tell if you don't. And she's like, I thought what that was well on? done, actually, because you're yeah. like, oh, this is weird. He's going to fuck his daughter. Yeah. And then he doesn't well and i think i think credit goes to to travolta's performance there of just like creeping that scene up right like was, if, i mean he travolta's a creepy human being so I mean, if, yeah. yeah i mean if he if that's not a good performance like if, if he doesn't act well in that scene then that whole scene is just ugh. but i think because he really does a great job embodying not only the personality of cage but the personality of the character um and kind of the mannerisms and all that kind of stuff. Because he's, he's kooky, he's weird, he does a lot of yelling, and he has a lot Crazy of weird catchphrases. But yeah. Um, so yeah, and then it kind of sets off this whole chain of events where... Uh, Things happening. Basic, happen. Yeah, basically Nicolas Cage... Uh, I don't even know how to describe this. Like, like So Sean Archer has to break out of prison uh, to go stop him. And like meanwhile... I, I love that. Uh, I love that he does what probably anybody would, any criminal would do in that situation, is he goes and like diffuses the fucking bomb that he plants at the L.A. Convention Center, and he's like the hero cop, and then he tries Big to hero. fuck Travolta's wife. Um, did, did we dis- did they ever did they ever have sex? Did we determine that? They did not have sex. No. I mean, would that technically be cheating? I mean, it's the same body, no a different body and face thing. You're yeah, right. different body. But I, I don't think they ever they ever do. Um, and I like the way that the plot unfolds too. Like I just, I it, it, everything in this movie worked so well for me. Um, 
and I, I going back to that, I hate to be a broken record, but it, a lot of that is is credit is due to the performances. I don't think the performances were that great. I think the performances are excellent in this movie. I think this is a really, really good. To me, this could be considered in the quintessential '90s action films. I, I think this movie is that good. Oh wait, <laughs> it's it's so it's so bonkers. Let me let me ask you this though. So this was originally, uh, and I, I think you'll probably be like, yeah, that makes sense. Once I tell you this, this was originally supposed to be a vehicle for Stallone and Schwarzenegger, I and now that. I really want to see that movie where Schwarzenegger does this. I think it would just be so great. Uh, and then as well, like Patrick Swayze was also considered for a role in this movie. So like this was really gunning after like the nineties action, like hardcore action stuff. But, um, yeah. Uh, what, what else did you want to talk about, Max? Well, uh, really the one thing that I thought was that the movie could have been 45 minutes shorter. Oh no. I mean, they, they dragged out the, the ending. Okay. They're in the church. Now they're on the speedboats. And they're in the house. Now they're shooting each other. They're back on speedboats. Now they're in this other area. Like, there is no reason to have 14 extra scenes of them chasing each other. <laughs> it's like watching a, a family guy, a Peter versus the chicken. Yeah. No, and I like, but I like that, though. Like, they get into the church and they have the Mexican standoff, which is great. When you know that's coming. And then I think the most predictable scene in this movie, like, I was literally waiting for this scene was where Travolta as, or I'm sorry, uh, Nicolas Cage as Travolta is holding Travolta hostage, and the fucking daughter has to pick who, she's like, don't shoot him, shoot him. He's the real one. He's the real one. I'm the real one. It's just, you could not have predicted, like, you could not have a movie like this and not have a scene like that. Like, it's just so, that's quintessential to a movie like this, and I, I just appreciated that scene. And then she fucking shoots uh, her dad, basically. Oh, yeah, in the arm, yeah. And then at the end, she's just like, sorry, I shot you. <laughs> yeah. Every, just, oh, man, this well, movie. And I don't understand, like, so they find out it's him, he uh, that um, Travolta's character is him because yeah. his wife, like, takes some blood and, like, goes to the hospital. Like, what doctors would be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely the him and him. They're going to be like, the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, I, that it was very, they tied it up very loosely. I you know, What's this the kids is... with the bowl cuts. Like, what the hell was going on in the nineties? How ugly were kids back then? Uh, they were... just put a bowl on your head and cut around it, there, Tommy. I mean, we were nineties kids. Yeah, I never had a bowl cut. Neither did I. Fuck. Um. Yeah. So, like, can we talk about how uh, Caster Troy dies in this movie? Uh, he fucking shoots him with a harpoon come on how do you not enjoy that i mean this is after the speedboat like ran into a dock and for some reason was filled with napalm and fucking explodes also we talk about the speedboat chase where he's like first of all he's water skiing at probably 80 miles an hour with no water skis on yeah classic classic loved it runs straight into a tugboat does not (laughs) get disintegrated instantly, goes through the tugboat, kills everyone on the tugboat, and lands, and they're still motoring on. Yeah. And I, I also love, um, I, I love that, this is one of the things I appreciate about this movie, is it tries to have this, like, really uh, obvious, I, I don't know if you caught this or not, so when he kills Caster Troy with the spear gun, his fucking arms are out and it's like John Woo is trying to come full circle from the beginning of the movie like he's Christ on the cross. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was the only one who, who got that. How would that be coming full circle? Because he's in the fucking minister. I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's John Woo's like... Yeah, but that was because that has nothing to do with anything. I, I understand. But that's I think what... John Woo knew what the fuck he was doing, to be honest. What's that? I think John knew. John Woo knew what he was doing. I think he knew what he was doing. The action in this movie is... I, I can't believe you don't like the action. It's so... It's it's, it's so... so ch- it's cheesy. It's so stylistically shot, though. Like, the way no, that it's, he uses... No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's cheesy. It's <laughs> stupid. Like, you can't, like, have just some explosions and just be like, oh, it's really stylistic how how that uh, that garbage pail exploded there. Like, it's just cheesy. There's a lot of 
shitty cinematography in the 90s. This oh, is I a think, good example of it. I, oh, man. The cinematography was great. The action sequences are great. I don't know. I don't know what you're. I don't know. I think we watched a different movie. Because because all because great. I can I can agree with you on on the the other the the very the minutia of it. Like I can agree with you on like some of the the plot holes and things like that. But like I I this movie I think is just really well shot and it's just really well. It's slick. It's it's very stylish. I know I've said that word like six hundred times, but it's it's a very stylish, fun. Uh, 90s action thriller with the uh, with two great performances. Dude jumps off of an oil rig and doesn't die and somehow swims to shore <laughs> and then goes to a country club and steals the ballet. <laughs> and and, and I, love, I love in that what scene. What was going on during that time? <laughs> I love in that scene too where he just jumps off and the helicopter's like, ah, fuck it, he's probably dead. <laughs> yeah, and then Travolta, they're like, they killed him. He's like, do they have the body? Well, yeah. no. And he says, he says the do they have the body? <laughs> like, oh, man. He just jumped off this oil rig prison thing we rigged up here. He's probably good, though. He's also, the most dangerous criminal in the world. I, I have one other complaint with this movie, and that is the, the, the kid who is supposed to be Caster's son, that is so shoehorned into the movie. And you knew exactly where that was going to at the very end when they adopt. Oh, yeah. Uh, they they agree to to adopt it. Like he brings them always be like, can he be part of the family? <laughs> hey, so glad you turned eighteen. So uh, your mom and dad are both criminals. I ended up killing them both after your dad killed my son. Yeah. Um, and I brought you in to fill the void, but I never really could. That's why I beat you so much harder. Um. <laughs> goodbye. Get out of the house, please. This was this was good when you were like five, but now that you're older, I I don't feel the same. Get out, please. Also, I have another question. Why why in the scene where he um where Travolta is being held captive by Cage, obviously in their in their switch bodies, why can he all of a sudden talk like Travolta as Nicolas Cage again? But then when they're fighting and at the end of the film where he kills him, it's back to Nicolas Cage's voice. Well, not to mention the doctor specifically told him if anything like you like run really fast or get hit in the chest, your shit's not going to work. <laughs> he's like getting beat with like tables and like That's punching them with baseball bats. And like uh, he's, there's he's so doing many a lot of holes. things that would that would damage that voice box. <laughs> there's so many plot holes in this movie. I, I just, yeah. you know, I, I don't know that it's because a lot of 90s action movies are not good. Like they're not good movies. Um, I'm, just, I'm not a fan of cheesy action. Like, I, I love rather, it, man. This is so I'd great. I'd rather have like legitimate action and not just like kaboom, this is so kaboom, much fun. It's the '90s. You're all idiots. How can you not love them fighting and <laughs> just fucking doves flying? All right. Everywhere? Well, I, like, I will <laughs> ask you this: Are you a fan of the first Fast and Furious movie? I am. I am a big fan. I'm not a big fan. I, I lied. I don't know why I said big fan. I am a fan of the first Fast and Furious movie. I do like the 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 action. Uh, it's a stupid plot, but I like it. My problem with the rest of those movies is that it's just too ridiculous now. Like, this movie is ridiculous, but it's still grounded in the sense that, like, yeah, the face transplant thing probably wouldn't happen. But these characters exist, right? Like, this, this, so, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I too, I don't know. What are they going to call the sequel? Face Off, Center Rise. Well, I was kind of I was, I was kind of curious. Also, funny fun fact about uh, hockey: John Woo put the slash in the title because he didn't want people to confuse it with a hockey movie. Um, but let me just—we'll wrap it up here. Um, well, whether or not this was a good discussion, we'll let the audience uh, decide because we kind of just were all over the place. There was really no structure to that discussion. Hey, by the way, thanks for all your efforts. Uh, let's just redo your surgery real quick. Yeah, he's been. He's been dead for like a day, but let's just let's just get that face back off there. <laughs> Max, there's a couple of taglines that I found for this that I really want to read. One of them, this is, a, I, I don't know if these are real or if they appeared on posters, but they were on IMDb on the taglines. One of them, one of the taglines is, it's like looking in a mirror, only not. <laughs> and then it's they, funny because they, one of the pivotal scenes, they actually do literally look in a mirror. Yeah, which is great. That scene where they're like back to back in the on the mirror or whatever, and then they like have like they turn around and like shoot at each other. I, that scene is great. Is that what you're talking about? Like the scene where when they look in the mirrors. Yeah, is that the scene where they are like? Yeah, he's like he's like 
<laughs> something he's like, we're never going to be able to do this. He goes, well, plan B, we just shoot each other. Yeah. Also, just, not to we're, we're, get off track again here, but like, there is, um, he does at the end of this movie what, what I think, once he knew he was fucked, he probably should have done anyway. And that's basically try to destroy his face. So he starts, like, cutting his face. Like, uh, Nicholas Cage starts cutting his face as John Travolta, which I thought was, well, like, wow, right. that makes sense. Like, why didn't he do that when he knew he was already fucked? And then there just so happens to be a harpoon lying next to Nicholas Cage, and he shoots him through his stomach. Well, anyway, he had that in the boat with him. Oh, it was in the boat, and then it just, like, ended up on shore? They're not on, They're not in the boat when he dies, though. They're in, like, a weird, like, No, I don't know. No, he something. tried to, like, shoot him in the boat, and then <laughs> apparently it survived the explosion. Uh, here's like, the other... I don't... Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I, was just, I was just like, I just don't understand, like, like, somebody like Richard Corliss from Time Magazine said, uh, the film isn't just a thrill ride, it's a rocket into the thrilling past when directors could scare you with how much emotion they packed into a movie. Yeah, man, there's a lot of emotions. Obviously, I agree. he's never seen... I never felt emotionally connected to anyone. I did once, again, once they... Once... Cage is like the same dude in every movie. But Check he's not the in this movie, though. Like, that's the point, though. He's John. He's he's the straight man kind of in this movie. And, like, uh, Travolta is the, the nut. Um, I mean, get it, but... But, anyway, that other tagline that I, want, <laughs> that I wanted to bring up, uh, this is, I think, the best one. To destroy your enemy, you must find him, face him, and then become him. I thought that was great. Sounds like some Game of Thrones shit. <laughs> um, I also started looking into when you mentioned the sequel, and I also started looking into why this movie didn't get a sequel because this seems like the kind of movie that I would didn't get a sequel definitely had gotten a sequel. It doesn't have one, um, and in fact, this well, movie. What the hell would the sequel have been? Yeah, we had I to hire know. four thousand new officers. Cause okay, one's dead. But <laughs> but here's the thing. Speed has a sequel, and it's not another bus, but they do it with a cruise ship. You up the stakes. That Speaking of stakes, that's what grounds this movie, is there's stakes. It's not just like, bang, 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 shoot him up, blah, blah, blah. It's There's there's stakes here. Like, not only is he trying to stop this guy, now he's also um, struggling to recover his own identity. Pretty easy to get so, out of, like, the super maximum prison. Well, I mean, if he was... If it was hard to get out of prison in movies they wouldn't make movies with people in prison uh but but anyway this movie made 245 million dollars worldwide 120 112 thousand excuse me here in the states uh did most of its it over half of its business overseas uh john Wu being a china uh, chinese native uh it helped i'm sure it did well let's see uh the film's foreign total it doesn't have i don't have a, a gross in china but i'm sure a lot of the international gross was in china china tends to eat a lot of these movies uh actiony movies up um, but this movie, I think, uh, kind of maybe came out at the wrong time as far as where they wanted to make money. Cause I was looking at the box office, uh, and the number one movie that weekend that it came out was Disney's Hercules. Um, and then men in black was also just starting its theatrical run. And we all know that men in black made oh. a fuck ton of money. Uh, I think it made close to 600 million worldwide. This movie has a budget of eighty million, though. This Face Off. They made they made a handy little profit there, that's for sure. Yeah, it was not a bad profit at all. But uh, I think I'm sure a lot. Of, speaking of that, Speed Two Cruise Control was in theaters at the same time as this, which I love. Um, but like, you have other things competing with it. Uh, Batman and Robin. We know that movie's terrible, but um, you know Con Air, which is a very similar movie. Great movie. Uh, I like this one more than Con Air. I haven't seen Connor in a long time, but Nicolas Cage is just like a badass, long-haired dude with a heart yeah. of gold. So well, that's, that's and like John Malkovich is in it too. So, so you well, hold on a minute. Let me get this. Story. I haven't. I Before haven't seen Connor recently. You just said Nicolas Cage is a badass with a heart of gold. Isn't that what John Travolta is in this movie? Because he's a badass. I mean, he's a he's a tough. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I, I enjoyed his character. Like the dude can just do whatever he wants. Yeah. I just wasn't like. I don't know. Uh, you know, I think Nicolas Cage, he just, he can't go to that next level of acting, you know? I think he's great in it. Uh, don't listen to Max. Just kidding. Uh, you might, you, you might, you might find yourself the same. Um, but yeah, so 
I just no, like it. I just like it because it like like I mentioned just before, it has the stakes. It has that uh, you know, it has that you want Travolta. You know, you care about Travolta. You want him to be back in his own body because he has. Travolta the was a douchebag. I didn't He's care about him. him. Well, I did. He was I, a dick to his family. I enjoyed the film. A um, dick to everybody else. Maybe. I think he just, you know, he this is this was his emotional journey of of of, of finding himself. Sweet dude, uh, your son got killed. You just killed seven hundred people trying to find this guy. Well, risk reward in the nineties. That's what justice was worth. <laughs> I guess I heard another guy. All right. Um, unless Max got unless you got anything else to say, I think that's gonna about do it. Uh, for this episode. I just don't understand. How does your dude not take the cable wires off of the guy? <laughs> like, it's clearly visible he's wearing wires, and as soon as he gets shot, you can see the wires pull him away. That's that's okay. I don't care about that. I don't care about that stuff. Pretty sloppy. You're sloppy. Second. <laughs> All right. Um, that is going to do it for this episode. Nice, short, and sweet. Just under an hour. Um, a real short well, sweet. it probably won't be under an hour I'll, I'll you know if we edit it or do whatever um and like i said well we're, we're hoping to get into uh you know apple podcasts things like that uh we're gonna have to to figure it out but uh next week uh we're gonna pick a movie we're gonna rate right now we're gonna we're gonna get a poll out and we're gonna see if people will vote on it and uh we'll get uh we'll get a couple of movies picked and you guys can choose what we uh, what you want us to watch so um that's going to be it. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Max, you want to tell them about that? Yeah, I got uh, Real Takes. Um, all the snark, none of the snob on podcasts there. We're, I think we're steadily getting like one like a week. So yeah. um, that's like 300 people a year. So in about 10 years, we'll be hitting it big. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, but no, it's just, a, it's just a page to post our stuff up on there. And, you know, like face off, if it's something you're looking to watch and you just want to hey, is this movie good or not? You know, we'll just discuss it. And uh, I think we're, we're kind of funny, I think. I think so, too. I, you, the conversation went a little bit off the rails, but I think that's very true to the, the tone and the style of this film. I think it goes a little bit off the rails. But uh, I recommend it. I would say go. I would say uh, take a rainy Sunday and, and watch it. I'm not saying, I, you know what, realistically, we just spoiled the whole movie. So if you haven't seen it, um, hopefully that doesn't. Mean- I don't know, we jumped around a lot. I don't people may not know how it ends. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I mean we we kinda of talked about the end, but I don't know. Go either way, check it out. Check it out for yourself. See what you think. Um let us know in the comments here what you guys thought of the movie or what if you like face off. Uh or if you like this podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Um which is YouTube uh, and Real Takes is the name of the channel. Uh, we're going to be uploading, like I said, monthly uh, top five is hopefully doing some movie reviews. We're going to be trying to do this once a week. I think we're going to try to shoot, what do you think, Max, every Friday? I think we're going to try to shoot to get this show up. Yeah, that'd be good. Just kind of a consistent a consistent shoot date for all our regular yeah. fans out there. Yep. You can find me. Shout out, shout out to our sponsors, uh, Microsoft. <laughs> uh, definitely, not Papa, definitely not Papa John's. Yeah. No, that news is, is not good. And yeah, thanks indeed. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter uh, and Instagram and Facebook, uh, just at Riley Granson. Max, where can the people find you? Uh, at your local watering hole. Um, no, I'm at Max Medlin uh, for Twitter. Um, as always, if you think I'm a good person, please don't uh, view that webpage. There's a lot of anger out there. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I think this went well. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this kind of new format and uh, we'll talk to you guys next week.